Hello, I'm John Witowitz of the Photographic Historical Society of New England. We're an organization uh, whose members like to you collect and repair and use elderly cameras. And uh, many of others of our members also like to uh, collect antique images. There are some of us who actually like to make antique images, such as this antique tin type that I can guarantee you is an antique because I shot it myself uh, last summer, or the alt processes of today, such as cyanotype, or salt print, again, processes that go back to the, back to the 1840s. What's true of, uh, look, a tintype is something that you would shoot in camera, but what's certainly true of uh, salt and cyanotype is that they require, they're contact printing processes that require large negatives. So you need a negative the size of your image. Pretty much um, a four by five camera is a bit much to, it can be a bit much to carry around, but I'm gonna show you a technology that was very popular in the 1930s, European cameras that were nine by twelve that took nine by twelve centimeter film, slightly smaller than four by five, that collapsed down into a package this big. And the cameras came in different in different sizes. Open it up and we will extend extend the bellows. Oops, me. Leave the rails in, press that, extend the bellows out. The cameras were very, very versatile in the way they were, in the way they could be used. If you were just casually shooting, you could use the, the mirror viewer, you know, hold it down at gut level and fire your picture. You could turn it and use it in a horizontal format. If you were doing fast action photography, you could use the frame finder, guesstimate your focus and take your picture. Most often though, however, they were intended to be used uh, on a tripod and an image viewed through the, through the ground glass. When you would go to take a picture, you would set your picture up and then of course close the shutter, you cock it, take your ground, gla ground glass out and slip a holder in place, pull your dark slide, and you cock your shutter, and take your picture, slide, slide back in, and first take it out again, and then that goes back in the bag. You hopefully keep track of what you've been shooting and you're on your, you're on your way to take another picture. The cameras, a similar model's cameras came in different sizes. For example, this is a Kodak Rekomar 33, which was designed for shooting primarily 9 by 12 centimeter film. This is its uh, smaller sibling, the Kodak Rekomar 18, which was designed to shoot Six and a half by nine centimeter film, or two and a quarter, three. And a, I'm sorry, uh, two and a quarter, three and a quarter film. With this, this I use this camber for shooting ten types in in this size. The backs um, came in a number of different models. Prop, what I feel are the best quality ones are the are the Kodak backs, and Kodak would. Kodak, you would pull, and then you put your frame, you put your negative material or, or tintype material in here, close it. Of course, this is all done in the dark room. Put your slide in, and you load a few of these up, and you're on your way. Here is a Kodak back in the uh, in the larger nine by nine by twelve centimeter size. They also made these in three and a quarter, four and a quarter American foam sizes for the American market. But again, same thing. Put your material in, and and you're on on your way again. There were at least a half a dozen manufacturers in the 1930s who made very similar cameras. You know, these are Kodaks. In fact, these are Kodaks made in Stuttgart, Germany, not in Rochester, New York. 
Kodak had purchased the Nagel camera work in, uh, in Stuttgart some, at some period of the 1920s. The, as an example of a uh, similar camera by another company, this is a Zeiss. It, as a general rule, you'll find you know, Kodaks, Zeisses, Eikas, uh, Voigtlanders to be generally fairly, fairly similar, though there will be differences in detail. The cameras fall into two general quality classes. The first, the Kodak here is an example of the higher grade camera that has a double extension bellows. This camera can actually focus down to a one-to-one -one rate, down to a one-to-one -one magnification. In other words, it can photograph in an area the size of the sheet of film. That's very nice to have. And again, the cameras had rise and fall on the lens and also sideways shift on the lens. So they're actually, a, it's a lot of versatility in a very small package. The cheaper, simpler cameras would have, uh, such as the Zeiss Volta, uh, had just a single extension bellows. So about the closest this camera can go, I would say it would be, uh, let's say it's here six feet, and maybe, maybe, maybe down to four. But it doesn't have the capability of the, of the double extension bellows. Even when the cameras are closed, you can tell this is substantially lighter than, than that one. Film backs um, came in a number of different styles. I've shown you the, Co the Kodak. This is an example of a Zeiss back. And in this case, the film would slide into this film sheath, and the sheath then clips into the back here. It's actually more versatile than you think because if you're not using the film in a sheath, you could use a glass plate in this, uh, in this negative holder. If you're thinking of doing your own dry ambrotypes, you know, gelatin-based uh, glass, glass negatives, glass positives, this is an excellent camera to work with. I probably wouldn't recommend it for wet plate collodion. You'd make a mess of the camera and the holder. And again, this was made for, for 9 by 12. In the case um, of three and a quarter, four and a quarter, there were adapters. This is, so again, I pulled the sheath out of the, the film holder. But this is in fact a three and a quarter, four and a quarter sheath. It's slightly smaller. And that sheath fit into this little frame that brought everything up to, uh, up to nine by 12. There are various ways different companies did this and new companies had different solutions to the, to the problem. The Kodak and, I found so far that the Kodak and Zeiss holders are, are cross compatible uh, and they're also compatible with some, some Voigtlander. The important thing to watch for it is, that if you, is to be sure that you've got a thin edge along the side here. I've seen Voigtlanders and other models with a thick edge, a different system that, where the holders are not compatible with, with what I've shown what I've shown you. The cameras are readily available on the used market. The important thing to watch for is that you have an intact bellows. Pinholes in the edge of the bellows uh, are a pain to deal with that you can't deal with them using material like rubberize it to, to patch the holes. But I primarily you know, look, for, look for a good bellows. And, and the higher quality cameras had good quality leather bellows that generally survive very well. The shutters may often be slow and sticky, but these rim set coppers are easily cleanable. Uh, there are sites on the web that show you how to take them apart. Um, you will, will not frequently find fog between the two front elements of the lens. Uh, on the better graded ones, these were often four element lenses. The rear two elements were cemented together. The front two elements were air spaced. As long as you don't have fungus uh, deeply etched in the glass, you're generally okay.